Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COP USA. I am your host, Nina AJ. I have precious ones here that want to minister a Christmas song unto us. And when they are done, I will be back and then we'll go on with the program. And then the precious ones that I have zoomed in will introduce themselves. So precious ones here, if you want to come stand here and then give us a Christmas song. Away in the manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down their feet. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the head. The cattle are falling, the poor baby sleeps. The little Lord Jesus. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till morning and night, and stay by my cradle till morning and night. I shall have a fish a a to you, a fish a pie, I think I'll make two yes to you. A fish a pie, I fish a pie, I think I'll make two yes to you. Yeah, I'm a fish a pie, I think I'll make two yes to you. Merry Christmas. Precious ones, we hope you did enjoy the song. Merry Christmas to all of you at home. Merry Christmas to all our precious ones around the world, our followers, our viewers. We want to wish you all Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas to our precious ones here and their family, their Ampufu family, their Ofori family. They are boys' family, the Insura and her family, um, the Janelle family. God richly bless all of you. Merry Christmas. How can we forget our fathers? Our fathers, our fathers. We want to take this opportunity to wish our national head, Apostle Mike Ajibara Mwakun, um, a happy, happy Merry Christmas to you and your wife, Mama Shi. Merry Christmas to you. How can we also forget our own children's ministry national leader, Reverend Frank Prempe. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas, you and mommy, Mrs. Agnes Prempe. God richly bless all of you and all the children's ministry national executives and our fathers all around the world and COP USA. Pastor Morgan, we want to wish you our father behind all this and elder son. And here I know you say Merry Christmas to you and your family. Merry Christmas to all teachers within the nation, children's ministry teachers. We love you. We, we appreciate all the hard work. We want to wish all of you Merry, Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you watching us this afternoon. Today, a son has been given unto us. We want to wish all of you Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. We love all of you. I fish your pa, I think come at you. I fish you say, Nia Tim come. I fish you say, Nanyoma, I can see, I can see it. I am my name. 
we love all of you. Precious ones, we give the children that are here, my precious ones, here to also introduce themselves. We can, you, you can start with the first person. Hi, my name is Diana Foy from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Foy from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is James Ose Ankofu from PIWC New York District. Hi, my name is Shara and I'm from Oakland District. Hello, my name is Janelle Piamenka and I'm from Greater Grace Dallas District. Hello, my name is also Sean and I'm also from Dallas District. God richly bless you, my precious ones. God, God richly bless all of you. As we all know, I know by now you have opened your gift. You have seen um, what mommy and daddy or Santa had for all of you. Those that were in the good list, you had good stuff, right? But those that didn't make the list, hopefully we'll keep you in our prayers. Next year, you will make the good list. But through it all, the Lord has been good unto us. The Lord has been faithful unto us. In this season, there were difficult seasons and there were good seasons. But through it all, the Lord has been on our side. Merry Christmas to all of you again, Afrisha Pa. We'll go ahead and we'll learn our lesson. We'll start with our memory verse for this afternoon. We're going to start with our memory verse for this afternoon. So I'll share my screen here and we'll look so this afternoon, our memory verse will be taken from Luke, let me open here, Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Luke chapter 2, verse 14. And I read, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Amen. 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 So Luke chapter 2, verse 14, glory to God in the highest heavens and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Hallelujah. We pray that as we celebrate and that we are in the mood of Christmas, his peace will rest upon us. His favor will continue to shine upon us. Precious ones, Practice your memory verse and share with a loved one. God richly bless you. We'll jump straight into our scripture reading for this afternoon. Our scripture reading is Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20. Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20. And Prophet James will be reading for us. Luke chapter 2, from verse 1 to 20, the birth of Jesus. And I'm reading from the NIV version. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor in Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the God of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered their pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. I just read from Luke chapter 2 from verse 1 to 20 from the NIV version. Amen.
Amen. God richly bless you. Amen and amen. God richly bless you. Uh, Prophet James, fantastic reading. Uh, we appreciate you. So precious ones, the virgin birth of Jesus is one of the best known stories in the Bible. With the birth of Jesus, God became a man to walk among us and to be our savior. Prophecies about the birth of Jesus go a long way back to Genesis. Also, according to prophecy, Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, a small town of a city of David. And that story can be found in Micah 5 verse 2. But Joseph and Mary lived in Nazareth, a city over 50 miles away from Bethlehem. But a prophecy has already come that this savior, this precious, precious gift will be born in Bethlehem. Hmm. And the baby might be born any minute from now. So meaning that Mary was already pregnant. Now, Caesar Augustus made a ruling that everyone should travel or everyone should go to their collecting census. So everybody needs to travel to Bethlehem to go and register and come. Everyone 12 years or older must go to the city of origin to register and pay their taxes. It was called census. Hmm. Caesar needed to know how many people lived in the entire Roman Empire. So he would know how much taxes he would collect. Hmm. Well, although the baby Jesus, although baby Jesus might be born any moment from now, they have to obey what the king has said. So Mary and Joseph wanted to obey the law and decided to what? And back on this 50 miles of journey to Bethlehem but they were living in Nazareth. They were both descendants of David. So they decided to walk. Pretty much precious ones, precious ones. When we are going to church, when we are going to school, wherever we are going, we just get in our car and mommy and daddy will drive us, right? In those days, you either ride on, you either will, will ride on donkey or a horse, but there was no car then. And some of them have to walk. In the case of Mary and Joseph, because they had some belongings with them, they had to put some on the donkey and then they have to walk. When Mary got tired on the way, Joseph put Mary on the donkey for a while whilst they embarked on this journey to Bethlehem. Now, precious ones, Prophet James read the whole story to us. And I know you know the story, so I'm not here to bore you with that. But let's try and go through the memory lane and learn some few things here. Let's test ourselves. Now, the first question is that, why did Joseph and Mary go from their home in Nazareth and walk all the way to Bethlehem? Why do you think they walked there? The question goes for us own. Yes, Declan. They went to Nazareth because the circuses issued a law for everyone to go to their hometown for a census. And plus, they had to obey the circuses. They had to obey the law, the law that Caesar Augustus passed. They have to obey. They didn't want to get in trouble. Obedience. Remember, Mary and Joseph loved God so much. They are people that obeyed God and they didn't want to get themselves in any trouble. So when the law was passed by the king, whose name was then Augustus, or Caesar Augustus, they have to obey and embark on this journey and go to their hometown for a census. Now, after Jesus was born, why was he placed in a manger? A clue is that we can find this answer in the verse 7 of Luke chapter 2 that James read from 1 to 20. After Jesus was born, 
<clears throat> excuse me. Why was he placed in the manger? Yes. Anyone want to try? Yes, you sure. Because there was no more spaces at the end. Because there were no more spaces at the end. There were no rooms at the end. So that was the only place they got. If it is now, precious ones here, before a baby is born, you get your, your, your baby room ready. You have the crib. You have everything that you would do to make a baby feel comfortable, right? In the, in the case of our Savior, Jesus Christ, he didn't get all that. He didn't get a room of him, uh, for himself. He actually got the manger, the manger. And that's what the little kid sang for us. Away in the manger, no crib for Jesus to sleep in, right? He has to sleep in the manger. God richly bless you. Now, question one, well, what is a manger? What is a manger? Yes, Janelle. Um, kind of like, like a feed, like where you put hay for cows and animals. What, 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 what is a manger? Yes, James, do you want to try? Um, Janelle, God bless you. Janelle tried. So, James, I saw your hand up. What is a manger? A manger was like a place where like animal food was kept. So, like if animals were to eat, they would put it in a manger and that's kind of like their bowl for them to eat in. That's kind of like the bowl. So it's like a, a, a rectangular shape or it can be like a square shape where they put the food in there for the horses or for the cattle or for the sheep to eat from. So that is the major. God richly bless you, James. How do you think Joseph and Mary felt about spending the night where they kept animals? How do you think Joseph and Mary will feel or felt after spending the night where they kept animals? Yes, let's go to um, Darren. I think they felt a little bit disappointed since they couldn't find any other place, but also a bit happy because uh, if you couldn't find any other place, that means that you would have had to be born outside. And for the baby, that would have been very cold. And the moment you were born, you were outside. And no one is born outside. God bless you. Does anybody want to relate to uh, what was just said before um, I explain further? There's there's a lesson here. There's something that if somebody can catch, catch the, the, like kind of explain. Remember they said that, well, they were a little bit disappointed, but they were still happy, right? There's a piece, something that I want somebody to catch and relate to that. Yes, Declan. If not, I'll come in and say. Um, they were content with what they have. They were content with what they had. Remember, baby, Jesus could have been born in the cold, on the floor, right? So now, what we can learn from this piece in the manger, Jesus being born in the manger, and how Joseph and Mary felt after spending the night at the manger, is that word. Even though it wasn't the best place for them, they were still what, grateful to God for providing them with a shelter, a place to sleep, a place for Jesus to be born, right? And remember, it here, it is showing us two things, having an attitude of gratitude, right? Being content with what we have. And then two, two is showing us the spirit of humility, that the, the king that has been born, he is a king, but what? He was born in the manger. Yes, Darren. I wanted to say is that another thing it is showing is why God chose Mary and Joseph because if you if you were given birth to the king you'd expect him to like um, be born in a high place even for the parent they'd expect him that oh, wow I'm giving birth to the king of the world that means that God is going to make me rich wow I'm going to be happy but when the king of the world is born in a manger that would make you a little bit disappointed right then and there 
you'd lose it. But in the when you read the look, when you continue to read the look, it says that Mary kept all these like uh, like a secret treasure. That is from my mm. Bible. Like a secret treasure. That means that even in all this, I don't think he was she was really looking at the place where she was born, where the mm-hmm. baby was born, but what the baby was going to accomplish. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you, Daryl. Yes, James, you want to contribute? Yeah, can you can hear me now, right? Yes, we can. Okay, so when you said something like Jesus, you know, like you expect the king to be born in a palace or anything, it kind of reminded me of like what we were talking about in Sunday school today because you know the wise men who came to worship Jesus. At first, they went to the palace because they assumed that you know, like if a king was going to be born, he'd be born in the palace. So that was when, like you said, you would expect the king to be born in the palace because that was everyone's assumption at that time. Because when they read the prophecies, they assumed that Jesus would be like this great deliverer who would come down from heaven. And like they weren't really expecting him to be a baby born in a manger. So the interpretation of that would be that God knew his purpose for Jesus because Jesus's purpose was for him to come and preach to the people. Would you listen if a king came up to you and said, repent of your sins, or rather a person who's like gone, like a person who's on the same level as you communicating the message. So Jesus being born in a manger showed that he wasn't like high and mighty or way up there. He was as much of a human as the person sitting right next to him. So yeah. that helped him to effectively communicate his message and fulfill his purpose for his like birth. A- amen. 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 God richly bless you for the great contribution. God bless you, James. I love that piece. Um, who else? Who want to contribute before I go on? Janelle, is your hand up? No. no. Oh, okay. How about Sean? No? Okay. Yes, Darren. I think what James said is right, because another reason is that when um, Jesus grew up and everything, he said himself that it is harder for a rich person to enter heaven. Sorry, for mm. a camel. It is harder for, it is easier for a camel, a pin, a camel to be found in a haystack than a rich person to be found in heaven, because like to accept Jesus and believe all of that. Because it is really difficult when you read the Bible. It also says that you should pick up your cross and follow him. A cross is really something heavy to hold. So I'm just a very hard thing. It's not easy to always fly away from temp- flee from temptation. So everything you do, the rich people, they it is life is easier for them. Hmm, that is it. That is how I want to put it. Life is easier for them. So they won't go and say, okay, life is easier for me. I'm going to give half my possessions. Zachary, Zach, sorry, um, uh, I cannot know the name of the guy who was really, really, really short. Zacchaeus. Uh, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was one of like the very, very few because he gave up half his possessions right then and there. They meant he saw Jesus once. He didn't even get to know Jesus, but he gave it all up. God bless you. God bless you. Great contribution. Now we'll move on to the next question. And then the question is Jesus, the savior of the whole world wasn't born in a beautiful place like other kings. Why do you think that was? Jesus, the savior of the whole world, wasn't born in a beautiful place like the other kings, like King Solomon, like King David, like other kings, like Augustus. I'm sure they were born in a like in the palace or a very beautiful place. Now, the question is that, why is it that they were not born our savior? Remember, the creator of the universe, the king of kings, our Lord of lords, we will call him the wonderful counselor, the prince of priests, the Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. This wonderful and, 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 and gift to us was not born anywhere than the manger. Hmm. It teaches us a lot. Yes, Declan, then we come to James. So uh, first of all, I wanted to say that he was born in a major because he was humble. And plus, unlike other kings that were to be served, he was, his purpose was to, was to serve others. 
So they are totally opposite. God bless you. Yes, um, prophet. So I was gonna say humility too. So the reason why I was gonna say that is because mind you, the hot way you listed everything that Jesus is, I'm pretty sure that baby Jesus would have been worth uh, like would have been more powerful than 10,000 men in his time. All he had to do was like snap or at least cry. And then all you see is a beautiful palace appears out of nowhere. But the thing is him being Jesus, right? He had a purpose for coming to the world. So him being born in a manger shows his humility because mind you, even in Revelations, we get a look at like the day-to-day -day life of God where he sits on his throne and then there are angels worshiping him 24-7, casting their crowns before him and all of that. And you think he'd just sleep in a, he'd be born in a manger for being born in a manger's sake. He was doing that to show his humility uh, that he came to this world to serve because he told his disciples that the, the greatest person is the one who serves. So Jesus came to this world to serve and him being born in a manger was to show that he had the humility to serve. Amen. 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 God richly bless you. Precious ones that just joined us this afternoon, our topic for our lesson is Jenny to Bethlehem. Jenny to the Beth, uh, Jenny to Bethlehem. And previous weeks we have talked about the angel visiting Zachariah. And then we talked about, last week we talked about Joseph's dream. And today we're talking about the journey to Bethlehem. And then the journey is when Jesus and Mary and, and uh, Jesus' father, Joseph and Jesus' mother, Mary, were living in Nazareth and they have to move to um, their hometown in Bethlehem to go take census by the king's order. And the king's name is Caesar Augustus. And pretty much the, the purpose of our lesson um, this afternoon is that although many things have changed throughout the ages, one thing has not changed during all of this time. And that is the good news. The good news that Jesus came into the world um, with because, well, because of God's love. The good news that we know that we are celebrating now, this afternoon being Christmas day, is that a son has been given. A gift was given from God to all mankind. A gift was given to all of us. And now we, we, we celebrate Jesus Christ. That has not changed. That way, that good news has not changed. As of day, we still celebrate. Whether young, old, when people will come, and they will pass and go. But his word still sons. His word still says that what? God sent his only son to this world to die for you and I. He was born to bring us hope. Today, the son has been born. Today, the son has been given unto us. And we call him wonderful word, counselor, the prince of peace. All come and let us adore this wonderful gift, whose name is Jesus who was born in the manger. And even that it teaches us what? The spirit of humility. Our king was not born like the other kings. He was born in a manger. So we need to learn to what? Humble ourselves at all times. Mary and Joseph were not disappointed because they were promised that what? They are going to what? Conceive this king will be born. Maybe and um, other people or us may think that, oh, he, the sons I'm going to give birth to a king, he has to be born in the palace, or he has to be born in the hospital, or he has to be born in a very set up area. No, Mary and Joseph were content, even when they had a place, a shelter to sleep and the baby to be born. They were grateful. They have fulfilled the scripture. God richly bless all of us. So precious ones, I will not be long with it. We'll go ahead and then go to the next question. And the next question that I have, precious ones, the next question is that, what did the shepherds do after they saw Jesus for themselves? Remember, when Jesus was born, as I said, we cannot go all detailed, but you can take time and read Luke chapter one. Luke chapter two, excuse me. Luke chapter two, verse one to four, uh, one to 20. 
and take your time and read. And you understand why we even talked about the, 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 the shepherds coming in. A star was shown and they followed the star and they came. Now the question is, what did the shepherds do after they saw Jesus for themselves? What did they do? Yes. Sean, you want to try? And then I'll come to Declan. Um, they were happy and they praised um, him. Yes. Yeah. They were happy and they praised him. God richly bless you. Yes, Declan. Well, when you see the king, to, to me, when you see the king of like kings and lord of lords, you should be surprised. And also you should know that you should know, you should definitely spread the word. So that's what they did. But they didn't also, they didn't spread the word. They also glorified them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to say. They also what? Glorify him. His word is yea and amen. His word never changes. I was born a baby. Then I became, I came, I grew to one month, two months, three months, all the 12 yards months. Then went to one year old, two year old, three year old. And we keep counting, right? And I, I guess you were once a baby too, right? So every day we change, right? Every day I was once like Ishira. I was once like James. I was once um, the same age as all of you. But now I'm what? I'm out there, right? And all that I'm saying is that we change. If I show you my baby picture or you show me your baby picture, you realize that what? You have changed a lot. You used to drink milk. Now you don't drink milk. You eat all the white chain and the meat and the fish and all that, right? And all the McDonald's and chew hard bones and all that. You have changed. But when we were born, we had no teeth, right? We only drank milk. But glory be to God, we have what? As we age, as we go, we grow, right? But what? We change as what? We move on in life. But there's one thing that has never changed. And that is the word of God. And the word of God tells us that what? There was a prophecy that a son will be given unto us. The savior will be born. And today the savior is born. And that word has no change. And that will not change. It will go on forever and ever and ever. Oh, hallelujah. Precious ones. Precious ones. I know you're enjoying Christmas this afternoon. I know that you have whatever wish you had that you told mommy and daddy has been fulfilled. Precious ones, the good news that Jesus came into this world because of what for us is because of what his love for us is unmeasurable. He loves us so much. When we put Jesus first in our lives, no journey is too long. No hurdle is too hard because our hope and assurance is in Jesus Christ. Whatever we are going through, whatever challenge that is ahead of us, whatever we want God to do for us. Remember, Mary was pregnant and Jesus was about to be born and they had to travel 50 miles. But even though the journey was far, with God on their side, the journey was not too far. Before they got there, God had already prepared a place for them. Precious ones, as we celebrate Christmas, as we celebrate the king that has been born, we should always remember that one. Everything will change. Everything will pass, will come and pass. But there's one thing that never changes. There's one thing that will never pass. And that is the word of God. The good news that Jesus love, Jesus sent his only son to this world for us. And that son is Jesus Christ who has been born today. There is no journey that is too long. Whatever we go through, whatever that we think is difficult, remember God is on your side. Go to God and ask for it. And that journey that looks too long will become short in your life. There's no hurdle that is too high because our hope and our assurance is in the Lord. May the Lord bless us all, precious ones. May the Lord keep us safe. We were going to be, well, we're going to leave so that you can enjoy the rest of your day. We love all of you. 
we all want to say Merry Christmas. But before we leave, we want to wish all our precious ones that well, we're born, are born in the month of December. We want to wish Joel Morgan. Uh, she, he's not here today. Um, yesterday was his birthday. Um, so Morgan, uh, um, Joel Morgan, God richly, richly bless you. Happy birthday and more grace, long life, and more healthy life in your life. May you age. May you grow in wisdom, in favor. God richly bless you. God bless all of us. Until then. We will see all of you again next week. Stay put. Merry Christmas. Eat, but what? Don't overeat. Eat healthy and have fun. And let us have the attitude of gratitude. And thank God for blessing us with another year, keeping us safe throughout the whole year to see another year go to an end. May the Lord bless us all. We will see all of you again. We love you. We love you so much. We appreciate you. Until then, it's bye for now. Bye, precious ones. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye.